Welcome to Electron Line. Now we have something slightly different from before. Again, we're going to try to find the center mass of this object, but notice in this case, the object has a hole in it. We also want to divide the object into recognizable shapes. We have a semicircle on the left side with radius 10 centimeters. We have a rectangle on the right side, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, and we have a cutout, a hole right here, where the center is right on the x-axis of radius 5 centimeters. Recognizable shapes like this, we can easily find the x and y coordinates of the center mass of each individual shape. For a semicircle like this, the x coordinate would be 4r divided by 3 pi. The y coordinate would also be, depending upon what direction it's in, the y coordinate would also be equal to 4r times divided by 3 pi, depending upon which way it's oriented. In our particular case, we're dealing with the x coordinate. The y coordinate, of course, would be 0. Therefore, we're interested in this to apply to the semicircle over here. Now let's try ahead, let's go ahead and find the center of mass of this particular object. And by doing the, doing the example, you'll see how it works. We still use the equation that the x coordinate is equal to the sum of the x coordinates of all individual pieces multiplied times their areas. We sum them up from i equals 1 to n. But remember, if there's a hole, we actually subtract the hole from the rest, divided by the sum of all the x, uh, not the x coordinates, but of all the areas from i equals 1 to n. Again, remember that with the area as well, if there's a hole, we actually subtract the area instead of adding the area. It's like subtracting a negative quantity. We don't have to do it in the y-axis because in the y-axis, the, the y-coordinate for the center mass is equal to 0 because of the perfect symmetry here. So the x-coordinate is equal to, starting with the first piece, we know that the center mass is somewhere about here. This distance here from the halfway line is equal to 4r divided by 3 pi. This is equal to 4r divided by 3 pi, but we need to find the distance from the y-axis. We need to find this distance, which means it's going to be equal to the radius minus 4r divided by 3 pi. So the radius minus 4r divided by 3 pi, that is the x-coordinate of the first piece, multiplied times the area, which is the area of a semicircle, which is 1 half pi r squared. So that's the x-coordinate of the center mass of the semicircle, multiplied times the area of a semicircle, plus the rectangle. We're going to ignore the hole like it's not there. The center mass would be at the very center of the rectangle, which is halfway from here to here. We know that this is 10 centimeters. Another 10 centimeters puts you at the halfway point. It would be 20 centimeters from the origin, that is the x-coordinate of the center mass of the rectangle, times the area of the rectangle, which would be 20 times 20. And then finally, plus, the, oh, not plus, we need to subtract from that because we have a hole now. And where is the center mass of the hole? Well, notice that the center of the hole is 8 centimeters from the end, which means that if this is 20 centimeters, that places at 12 centimeters from the left side. And this here is 10 centimeters, which means that the x-coordinate center mass of the hole is 10 plus 12, which is 22 centimeters from the origin. Then we have to multiply that times the area of the hole, which is equal to pi r, oh, little r squared, right? So little r squared like this. And then we divide the whole thing by the sum of the areas. Again, the whole gets subtracted from that. We have 1 half pi r squared plus the area of the rectangle, which is 20 times 20, minus the area of the circle, which is pi little r squared. Plugging in some numbers. That's 10 minus, let's do this here. That would be 10 minus 40 divided by 3 pi. 40 divided by 3 pi. Multiply times 1 half pi r squared. Remember that r is 10. The radius is 10. That would be 100 divided by 2. That would be 50 pi. Plus 20 times 20 times 20. That would be plus uh, 8 plus 3 zeros, 8,000. Plus, oh, not plus, here we have to subtract because we had a hole. That would be r is 5, so r squared is 25 
that's 22 times pi times 25 and the whole thing divided by 1 half pi r squared remember r is 10 that's 100 divided by 2 that's 50 pi plus the area which is 400 minus because we have to subtract the whole that would be 25 pi I think I want to use a calculator for this let's see what we get 40 divided by 3 divided by pi we subtract that from 10 and we multiply it times 50 and times pi we add that to 8,000 and we add that, oh, we subtract from that, minus, subtract from that, 22 times pi times 25. So in the numerator, makes it a little bit easier, this is equal to 77,176 okay. divided by the denominator of 50 times pi plus 400 minus 25 times pi that would be 478.5 478.5 and then when we push the equal button we get 14.996 or 15 centimeters this is equal to 15 centimeters so the center mass of this object with the hole in it is 15 centimeters from the origin which places it right about there so this is the x and y coordinates of the center mass which is equal to 15 centimeters in the x direction and 0 centimeters in the y direction I probably want to do this one more time with the calculator to make sure I did it correctly but assuming that I did this correctly on the calculator that is how you do it again it's the X coordinate of the center mass of each individual piece here here and here for the three pieces notice we're going to subtract when we have a hole multiply times the area of each individual object the area of a semicircle the area of a rectangle the area of that circle that's cut out divide by the sum of all the areas the semicircle the rectangle but remember again you subtract the hole and so that becomes minus pi r squared, the area of the circle. Assuming I did not make a mistake on the calculator, the answer is 15 centimeters in the x direction for the x coordinate of the center mass.